Welcome to a simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank, part 54. Finishing the painting and preparing for reassembly. The original paintwork on this engine was very bad, both inside and out. I don't mean that it was badly painted, because it wasn't. The problem was that the paint was damaged and it was also very oily, greasy and dirty. Repainting the chassis like this using a paintbrush is taking a long time, especially since I have to do it often, very awkwardly, so the camera can see what I'm doing. If I just got on with the job, all you would see on the video would be shots of my arms, shoulders and back. This painting has reached the stage where I need to just get on with it and forget the camera. So for the rest of this series, there won't be any more painting of the chassis. You'll see the painting of the superstructure, but that will be sprayed, and nearer to the end of the series. Back onto the chassis painting job, I'm a bit puzzled why this red paint takes so many coats to cover. This is a new tin that's just arrived from Blackgate's engineering, and it's the same stuff that I used to paint the buffer stocks on my Sterling single. I remember that it took three coats before the finish became very homogeneous and solid. By the way, I don't recommend painting the inside of the frames a different colour to the outside. It's much easier to paint the entire thing in one colour, and the colour would be black. One problem I'm having is that the lighting in my kitchen, which is a softbox with three bulbs in it, is nowhere near as good as all the lighting I have in the workshop over the bench. At the end of this video, I'm going to show some clips from episode one, and it actually looks all right on the bench in the workshop with a lot of light, but really it wasn't okay, it was terrible. Some viewers may be wondering, why do I have a yellow submarine in the shot? Well, this is my Neptune yellow submarine, and at the moment I'm doing some work on it. It has a lead-acid battery inside it, and I'm going to dispose of that because it's completely flat. And there are some other small jobs to do on it. It's a great thing, and it works very well. Back now to this job, and as a bit of a change from painting, here are the valve gear parts that are cleaned up in the workshop. I'm not actually going to show the reassembly of the valve gear, because it will just take far too long, and I can't really say anything about it, other than this is assembly, and it's the reverse of disassembly. So instead, once the paint's dried, I'm going to take the chassis back up to the workshop, but I will have the valve gear in position. This engine cannot ever be a pristine example, because of the way it's been made but it should be okay by the time it's finished. I think for the moment I've finished with the red painting, so now I'm painting the outside of the chassis. First of all, using some gloss black paint, because that's what the chassis was painted in in the first place, but the more I paint it with the gloss black paint, the more I'm not liking it. I think I'm going to use HMG satin black paint, it's far better for chassis of locomotives. But this initial coat of gloss paint will be fine, and by painting the chassis laid on its side like this, the good thing is, there's no chance of any paint runs. And I can put a nice thick coat of paint on, to fill all the damage on the existing paintwork. Then I'll go over it with some HMG satin black. I'm quite good at visibly colour matching, but what I can never get my head around with paint is how different it looks when it's wet, to when it's dry. All of the way through this series, I've been really tempted to completely strip the engine down, send the chassis off for sandblasting and start again with a spray gun. The reason I haven't done that is because of the standard of the workmanship in certain areas. If this was a really beautifully made engine, then yes, I would have done that, but you do have to cut your cloth accordingly. I'm taking far greater pains with the paintwork on my 5-inch gauge sterling single because that's really beautifully made. I've shelved that project temporarily because it's too cold in the workshop for painting. It's okay while I'm in there with my aircon switched on, which obviously heats the place in winter. But the minute that I turn the air conditioning off, the temperature plummets down to ambient in a very short time, and this is not good for painting. I'm making progress with the black paint I've got to the front bit. I don't quite know what to do about the cylinder, though. It's been lined using some sort of sticky tape, and I'm thinking about rubbing down the cylinder to remove this lining tape as well as the lining tape on the steam chest, which, as you can see, is not even straight. I don't find the lining of models very easy at all. I have difficulty with it. I would rather leave a model unlined than spoil it with horrible painted lines on it. I thought maybe I could paint around the lines, and this is what's strange. Using a large paintbrush, I can paint around the lines without event. Give me a small paintbrush and ask me to paint a line, and it looks terrible. 
This attempt didn't look very good, so after the painting I removed it using a cloth. Here's a wide shot of my kitchen table, and as you can see it's not looking too good. The table that is. The chassis is looking better than it did. This is a clip from part one before I'd done anything at the chassis. The problem is the lighting's really good so it looks a lot better than it is. It's only when I go in close like this that you can see how horrible it was. This was how I first received the engine. Both of the steam chest covers had been removed to allow access to the small bolts that hold the smoke box saddle in place. I cleaned up the original covers and refitted them to test the engine, but I am going to have to remove them to refit the smoke box saddle. Mechanically in certain areas it's still not too good. If you look at this clip it shows the amount of play in the small end. The good news is that the valve gear is fully serviceable and doesn't require any more attention other than cleaning it up, unlike the crank pin which was originally loose but have now fixed this. And I also fixed this leak from the oil pump to the cylinder. Lack of lubrication is the very last thing that you want. And that concludes this episode. I'd just like to say, as I always do, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.